What's up, everyone? Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm McCrock Nick. And I'm Jammin' John. And we have an album review for you. So, I would say this is one of the more anticipated death metal releases that's coming out this year. Definitely a band that has a lot of hype around them. We're talking about the new release from Blood Incantation, Hidden History of the Human Race. This comes out the 22nd of November on Dark Descent. And this is the band's second full length. Their first one, Star Spawn, I own. I thought it was absolutely incredible. They have another EP and a split, too. So there really isn't much of a body of work for a band that has quite a cult following already. This band formed in 2011 in Denver, Colorado. And these guys love sci-fi, like kind of yeah. cosmic horror, bits of existentialism, and just all around kind of prying out the, the mind's eye whole thing. It's really, it's really wild. And this band also features two members of Spectral Voice as well. So the album opens up with Slave Species of the Gods. I assume they're talking about us because we suck. Right away you get a sense of the outright heaviness of this band. Mm -hmm. More of an angel right out of the gate. Like specifically Blessed Are the Sick. sick. Yeah, it, it sounded just like that. Definitely Immolation, which we're listening to in the background right now. Really cool song structure, and I like how it goes back and forth between these really sludgy, heavy moments to like, almost death. Definitely, I mean, there's a lot more death later on in this album, but yes, yes. right away I was hearing stuff that was very similar in terms of like, Chuck Schuldiner's style of writing. Chuck always had a flair for awesome songwriting, riff structure and all that, and it's very much a part of this already. This first song, I think, is very much probably the most straightforward yeah. song on here. Yep. Now, granted, there's a lot going on, but it's oh. definitely, as you progress into the album, you'll notice that n nothing is like this track. Yeah. This uh, one is just the raw death metal track, and yep. I think it's really yep. good at it. It's excellent at it, in fact. Yeah, the drumming is absolutely insane on this. There's lots of cool cymbal work. I mean, well, it's, John, you're a drummer. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, he's a hell of a drummer, very, very active. There's not really too many moments in this full album where he slows down. Again, reminded a lot of Immolation when it comes to the drum work on this record. Um, great cymbal work. He never stops. The mix, in my opinion, is a little thin, but it makes sense as you go through the record. So, yeah. Um, as you get more into atmosphere, which is something you could say about this record as a whole. Oh my god. And, and like every layer of instrumentation, mm -hmm. even the vocals, the vocals have a lot of reverb on them. Mm -hmm. They send these these big cavernous howls that just kind of echo across a song. Like this album is all about building layer upon yep. layer of just intensity and musicality. Like yeah. it, this yeah. is intense. The next track, The Geese of Power Plan, really starts showcasing a little bit more of their versatility in terms of the songwriting. Start off very straightforward. In fact, I, I like the use of pinch harmonics and dissonance on yep. this. Yep. Instant immolation, incantation vibes right away. Yep. And then you get to this bridge. This massively Middle Eastern bridge. Um, Nile. Nile. <laughs> Nile right away. I, Straight up Nile. Nile might be contacting their lawyers after listening to it because it was so Nile that it was practically Nile. Yeah. But at the same time, the Egyptology references really aren't there. This is more about aliens and pyramids and I guess the History Channel and that one dude that's in every fucking meme. <laughs> but uh, this was a gigantic epic moment and this was I think a point where the album really started shifting more towards experimentation, yep. progressive elements as yep. well. Yep, because everything after that was just that. Now, I liked how this Middle Eastern section shifted into almost kind of like death doom territory. The song really slowed down, but it kept those Middle Eastern elements throughout that. Mm -hmm. And again, this was about building this cool atmosphere. And the first thing I thought of were giant fucking sandworms in the movie Dune, because I love that movie, regardless of how cheesy it is. And I thought it was interesting that it shifts back to the more technical flair towards the end, but only for a little bit, just kind of bookend the song. And just once again showing off really cool songwriting dynamics again like well, these that, it's, it's like the the even towards the end of that part the guitars actually kind of drop out and it's just this really like massive blasty drum part but it sticks with that ambience yeah um like this this album yeah. sells an atmosphere yeah next in line would be uh inner paths of outer space I it, it mostly in fact it's all instrumental. There's one growl, one growl at the end. One growl. But the <clears throat> the song, you know, from what I hear, it sounds like 
like early Mastodon, like really early Mastodon meets Cynic. It's just got a real cool feel to it. Uh, it's it's actually got a pretty crazy video too. If oh you yeah, had a chance it, to check that yeah. Out. Don't get high and watch that. Or do get high and watch that. I might get high and watch that. He might get high and watch that. I really like how this song was a cool, slow build of a song. Like, it kept building yeah. up on layer. Yep. And it starts off very proggy, and again, atmosphere across yep. the board. Moves into this very dissonant blast beat section, which reminds me of a band like Ulcerate, which those guys excel at that level of dissonance yeah, so and chaos. Sure. I love Ulcerate. And then it bookends that opening melody again, but it kind of fades out very softly. Like, this was, I think, it, one of the best constructed songs on the album. And it's like a really, like, creepy, yeah. eerie feeling to it, too. It, yeah. it really drives home what they're trying to make everybody feel in this album. Yeah. Yeah. Like Cthulhu's watching you when you sleep. Yeah. He is. So now, the giant epic closer, and I mean giant, it's 18 minutes long. It's such a great listen. It is. And granted, it, it says Strike Force is called Awakening, but every movement in it actually corresponds to the title of it. So the whole name of the song is Awakening from the Dream of Existence to the Multidimensional Nature of Our Reality. In quotations, Mirror of the Soul. That's a mouthful. But this song might be one of the best 18 minute long songs I've listened to this year. This was top notch songwriting. Yep. Like, I was legit blown away. Yep. Opens up very straightforward death metal. Very, like, like again, Morbid Angel Morbid came up. Angel, yeah. Hate Eternal because it had that level of intensity to it. And then around five minutes and 45 seconds, it kind of just stops. And you get this giant synthy... Yeah, like a kind of like yeah. an eerie soundtrack part to a movie. Like, right before, like, an alien crawls out of a hole <laughs> and it eats someone. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you could actually probably cue this up to Alien and feel as though, yeah, this this would have worked perfectly. Yeah, this song reminded me of uh, the album Human from Death. Yes, the, Human or Individual Thought, but, yeah, but that yeah, era of death. That era of death, it just it sounds just like it. And, and then the next part that goes into really, really sounds like that, like the angular riffing, the solos that were traded off, and just amazing. Mm-hmm. Like this was. An awesome section. They brought us some thrasher elements, which make no other parents in the album. Like yeah. those were some yeah. moments that were strictly on this song. The guitar work was insane across the entire board. This song, I think, this was just their ace in the hole. Like they showed off everything on this, especially the end. The the end has this really nasty, nasty, oh. dissonant riff that progressively gets slower yep. with um, every step of the riff. Boom. And then yeah, the next step's yeah. slower. Yep. I went back to Incantation because they were really good at, you know, going from straightforward death metal to that death doom sound. Yeah. But this was even different than that because, again, you had all these additional layers, these distant squeals over it, and then all of a sudden this very almost classic doom metal section comes in the end and quite possibly the best solo yeah, on the Yeah, dude, it's got a gorgeous guitar solo on it. Just beautiful. And there's... A, because I, I think there's drums in the beginning, but it just kind of, like, fades out, yep. and it just turns into, like, this doomy, like, a, it's got acoustic guitar yep. for a minute, but that guitar solo is just nasty. It, it, it really, from front to back, it's such a good, the, the movement of the whole album, yep. just very it, well done. It really works well as one piece. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's really incredible. I recommend anyone listen to this because yeah. it's I don't it's hard to describe. If you love instrumentation and really experimental songwriting but you still want hooks in it, these guys kind of park that balance yeah, really yeah, yeah. well. It's it's a great journey. I I had a really really good time listening to this album. It, and and again for a, a four track 40 minute record, there was not a single time during this album where I was bored or I was like come on and up with the dissonance or you know uh, wanting there to be other parts that there weren't like it was just so well done I mean even at the end of this last track it kind of closed out in almost kind of a post metal fashion like, kind of like just where you kind of empty in the background with the guitars out front and it's a lot of reverb kind on of like it like a Russian circles yeah. Isis feel Paul you know? yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah. like really really good uh, this album is pretty damn fantastic and I'm pretty sure you guys know we're going to get a good rating out of this one <laughs> so Pretty sure he knows what he's going to give it, so I'm going to let him go first. I'm giving it five stars, man. 
I fucking love this record. I will jam this over and over again. It's just got such a great feeling to it. I, I don't have any complaints. I'm gonna go four and a half. If there's just a little bit in the beginning that maybe takes away a bit, uh, I think maybe just because it was the most straightforward track on there, I still think it was executed well. But the meat, the heart of this album is the remaining three tracks. Yeah. Like those tracks are absolutely unbelievable. Not that the first one's bad. I think maybe some tweaks in the production might have helped, but probably not too much because honestly, this album is all about building atmosphere. And holy shit, did they and build it? Was that done well? Yep. Yep. But yeah, I think this is this is probably year-end material for me. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, be perfectly honest. Definitely. There. Yep. So yeah, another killer album. So uh, once again, that wraps up another album review here from the Thralls of Metal. If you like what you saw, please give us a like. Maybe even give us a subscribe. If you like what we had to say, cool, let us know. If you think we're pieces of shit for any reason, at least let Nick know. Um, we, we do stuff like this literally all the time, so please keep checking back with us. Um, again, we had a real great time, so yeah. you guys take care.